Hey Team FG community, John Yacnetti here with Carlo Cancino. In today's episode of Ask Team FG, we're going to be taking a look at how can you maximize your retirement in a down economy. Remember, if you do enjoy our content, like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We love doing these videos for you. In today's episode of Ask Team FG, we're going to be taking a look at how you can maximize your retirement in a down economy. Remember, November is a Financial Literacy Month in Canada, so we figured we can put together a nice little video for you, especially those retirees uh, that are looking to get the most bang for your buck in retirement. Uh, and we have a couple helpful hints that uh, could assist you in today's video. So, Carlo, why don't you get us started? Thanks, John. Yes, November is Financial Literacy Month, and we thought we would take it upon ourselves just to talk about personal finance, give you some tips to try to make your financial position a little bit better. So, for those of you who are looking to retire, in this uh, very volatile economy, what can you do? So number one, if you're planning on retiring and cash flow might be a, an issue because markets have been a little bit volatile, why not work part-time? A lot of Canadians, well 55% actually, who are planning to retire, don't mind working in retirement if it's for less hours with less stress. So if you can find a job that perhaps was in your discipline or not, that can pay you additional income and you're working less hours, less stress involved, it can help ease you into retirement with that reduced income. Absolutely, and, and with an aging population that Canada has, um, there has become a lot of you know, job opportunity or even the opportunity to retain uh, your, your original position in a, a part-time capacity. Uh, it's something that we've noticed with a lot of our clients. Um, you know, heading into retirement, obviously your goal is to kind of settle down a little mm -hmm. bit and, and alleviate some of that stress, but you can still manage both where you still end up working part-time, you know, uh, feel like you're uh, continuing to serve a purpose and, and to uh, assist the company, but in a much more reduced role while still providing you uh, a source of retirement income. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you, you know, follow step number one, that could lead you into step number two, and that is the ability to now be able to defer Canada Pension Plan or defer Old Age Security. So in Canada, the further you defer a Canada Pension Plan and Old Age Security, the higher that benefit becomes on, on, a, on a monthly basis uh, in perpetuity until, until you pass away. So that could assist for uh, additional cash flow into future years. Or let's say you don't have that luxury. Uh, maybe you, know, you, you had to retire, maybe health was an issue, or maybe you just don't have uh, specifically long life expectancy as well. You can maybe look to take Canada Pension Plan maybe earlier than expected just to help with cash flow during that time as well. No, no, great points. Uh, number three, we've established cash flow, whether you're going to work part time, whether or not you're going to defer or take CPP or old age security early. That brings us to reassessing your budget. We know what the income is. Will that support the way that we want to live? If, if it will, then great. You've won. That's the exact retire retirement uh, lifestyle that you want to have. But if the reduced income isn't allowing you to do the things that you want to do, well, some tough decisions have to be made. Maybe the frivolous spending, maybe the, the, the wants have to drop uh, and the needs will have to be maintained. Uh, we talked about in a, in a previous video, inflation and how high it's running. When costs go up, that means more of your after-tax income goes towards those everyday expenses that are required. So again, in retirement, reassess your budget. You know your income, whether it's from part-time work or CPP or old age security. Determine what can be cut out or what doesn't have to be cut out because you've looked at your budget again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, leads us into uh, the next point, which is you know, some retirees uh, head into retirement with a large RSP uh, and um, maybe aren't earning a, a high income from Canada Pension Plan or, or Old Age Security. That actually gives you the opportunity to take a little bit more from the RSPs up until the point of your uh, the, the lowest marginal tax bracket. Um, so in Canada, that's just right under you know, approximately about fifty thousand dollars. So if you can withdraw money out of the RSP at that lowest tax bracket, which is right around twenty percent, um, that could be much more tax favorable now versus if you turn seventy one and you have to start taking out of your RIF at a much higher tax rate. Really, we're trying to minimize taxes in, in terms of when you take it out of the RSP, but there's also something called old age security clawback, which we're trying to avoid into future years. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar, if you're in a high income situation into your retirement while you're receiving old age security, uh, the government of Canada will actually claw back some of that benefit that you get uh, from old age security. So that's our number one objective, to try to avoid that and really to try to give you as much uh, after-tax dollars that we possibly can in retirement. 
Those are great strategies to employ, and you can even make it better if you haven't had the opportunity to maximize some of those other tax-free environments that the government allows. So Absolutely. if you have a tax-free savings account and you haven't been in a position to be able to maximize since they uh, uh, they were created, you could be pulling that additional RSP money up to the next marginal tax, or top of the next marginal tax bracket, and utilize the tax-free savings account, have tax-free growth going forward, and withdraw from the tax-free savings account as another income source when necessary. And all of these things that we've talked about, they're at random, they may not make a whole lot of yeah. sense. What you need to be doing is putting it all together in a plan. And that's the backbone of what we do at the McClellan Financial yeah. Group. We create a financial plan, cash flow projections, net worth projections, to help clients determine whether or not they will have issues in their retirement, depending on how much income is coming in and depending on how much uh, expenses are going out. And you can't really live worry-free unless you've got that plan in place. So if you are a Canadian watching this video and you don't have a financial plan or cash flow projection, net worth projection in place, we would suggest highly that you do so. Speak with your financial advisor, contact our office. We would be happy to have that conversation. At least get an idea of where you stand now from a financial position, what your expected cash flow will be, and whether or not your retirement income will be able to satisfy all of your projected retirement expenses. Absolutely. And, and in the simplest form, what a financial plan does is it helps you become proactive to some of these things as opposed to reactive. The same way that we're putting out this video to give you, you know, some financial literacy tips, we want you to be proactive. We want you to get ahead of the game. Get yourself in the best possible situation once retirement does come. And you know, regardless of what goes on around us, if you have a solid enough plan, you'll be able to get through any sort of market downturn, anything like that uh, going forward. But that's our episode of Ask TMFG for today. Uh, remember, if you do enjoy our content, like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm John Yaconetti. I'm Carlo Cancino. And this has been Ask TMFG. TMFG.